Welcome to Sandbox FOMO 5 from Bureau Happold. Each week, we pick short snippets from our most recent episode for your listening pleasure. These quick listens could be valuable insights, thought-provoking elements, or even practical advice that will no doubt enrich your life and knowledge. Maddie and Ben, in there very much the here and the now, what about Bureau Happold? What projects are you involved with that are perhaps informing the way that we think about fuel and our future? I think the general viewpoint now is to electrify as much as you possibly can. And there are some things which you won't be able to electrify. Industry, steel making, glass making, aviation are a bit further away. In terms of electrification, one project that kind of springs to mind, I guess, is the Community Heat project. So that's a kind of innovative demonstrator, if you like, to look at an off-gas grid community. It was in Barkham in Sussex. And we did a piece in combination with UKPN, who own all the electrical infrastructure in that region, in most of London, and Avesco, who are a community energy organisation. And it was basically to take that community of housing and say, how could we fully electrify that and remove it from oil? So it was quite an interesting kind of digital twin we created of that of that town and effectively looking at a whole gamut of things from upgrading the fabric to putting in heat pumps to PV, solar panels to wind and basically modelling that to show that it could happen. And it's kind of also to demonstrate that kind of community-led approach as well because... It's very difficult, you know, if you take a row of houses, terraced houses, for example, if they're going to all do things individually, it's going to happen very gradually and very piecemeal. And there's actually real benefit and economy of scale to a whole community doing a thing together and doing an energy, kind of taking the energy transition into their own hands and owning that asset. Because if you set a community which is what we were kind of looking at. If you sat a community next to the experts, next to the engineers, next to the guys that own the infrastructure and help them get the funding and help them with the technical aspects of the job, you could actually save them money. You could give them energy security. You could pull that community together. So there's a whole bunch of benefits and co-benefits to having an approach like that. Maddie, I know that we've talked before about smart local energy systems up in North Wales. Could you tell us a little bit more about that, please? Yeah, absolutely. So just looking at whole system approach when we are solving these community issues, looking at various projects that could join up and bring value and benefit to that community, which could be jobs, could be lower energy bill also decarbonizing, upgrading their current system. So we worked on a number of kind of local projects, looking at various aspects of bringing these projects, such as introducing a new ground source heat pump could feed the school during the day and then pick up the peak heat from a leisure center and possibly extend to the social housing. If we have got enough roof space, can we put more PV there to link to feed the ground source heat pump and then create a private wire which could benefit the locals from cheaper electricity. So bringing that kind of whole system thinking and creating a project could benefit the that which could benefit the community. It was at the heart of this project. And we are creating these kind of various models to be able to tackle these diverse set of projects or I I I don't want to say issues, but it's a diverse set of kind of challenges that we have to be able to get to our targets. So there is not one model that's going to fit all our challenges. We, We have to work with lots of different stakeholders to be able to solve these issues. I think this is something we inherited from the Victorians. This notion, this myth really, that innovation is the product of individual genius. People like Nikola Tesla at the end of the 19th century portraying themselves as these kind of idiosyncratic, asocial disruptors who are going to change the way that the world was and everybody needed to sort of go through them towards the future. And a lot of ways, yeah, that's very much where we tend to think about innovation now, but it has to involve disruption, it has to involve 
radical change. So it's actually really good to hear both Ben and Maddie talking about the need to embed new technologies in, in communities, to work together collectively, because the reality is that the myth always was a myth. It takes huge collective effort to energize the world and to do that successfully in the future. I mean, we have to organize together. You know, we have to think seriously about what different communities' energy needs are, how that can be achieved in ways that work for them. Well, I hope you enjoyed that quick dip into our last episode of Sandbox. Don't forget to subscribe to follow the show. You'll find Sandbox in all the usual places. If you want to join the conversation on social media, just use hashtag BHSandbox. We'd love to receive your thoughts or feedback, but also any other subjects you'd like to hear discussed in the future on Sandbox. Sandbox.